Hello everyone and thanks for watching. In this video I will be walking you through my mortgage loan analysis model. Now this model is best used by commercial mortgage uh, origination professionals looking to size a mortgage loan, but it also could be used by principals interested in knowing how, how many uh, uh, mortgage dollars they could get uh, for their pro property as well as analyze refi risk at the end of a hold period. And so like most models in our library, uh, you'll notice here that we begin with a versions tab. And then there are four input and analysis tabs and then a data tab where our data validation lists are housed. So let me just walk you through each of these tabs. The first is a loan summary tab where you'll enter investment information such as investment name, property address, property type, year built, etc. You'll also enter here the loan type, whether it's an acquisition loan or a refinance. And with a few small tweaks, this model could easily be used for uh, construction loans as well. Below the investment information section, we have the underwriting and pro forma summary, and this draws from the pro forma tab. Next, we have proposed loan terms and loan metrics, and that comes from the loan sizing tab. And then finally, we have a sources and uses table where you have mortgage debt, uh, the loan amount sized using this model, and the difference between that and the total uses would be the equity proceeds. Now, in the case of a refinance, where you simply have a loan payoff, you'll notice then that this becomes equity cash out. And so if you're a principal looking to refinance and you wanna understand how much equity you could possibly pull out uh, of the property, this would do that calculation for you. So I'm gonna revert this back to an acquisition say we have a purchase price of 9.9 .9 million. And then uh, just here at the bottom, uh, there's a note section. Uh, and this is where you'd make uh, notes about your sources or uses, uh, possibly notes about the investment itself. From the loan summary, we next move to the pro forma tab. And it's here where you build out your pro forma that's driving to a direct capitalization value. Now, if you remember from your real estate valuation 101, direct cap means uh, take a stabilized uh, net operating income, divide it by some capitalization rate, cap rate, to arrive at a direct cap value, or in this case, we're calling an underwritten value. And so in Often in debt origination, rather than using a DCF value, uh, mortgage lenders will use a, a direct cap value. So here you'll build out your pro forma. Uh, you can add rows, delete rows, and rebuild the operating statement based on uh, the property and the property type. Here we have uh, the, the base uh, operating statement that I've included with the model is kind of your typical apartment operating statement. But real easily, this can be manipulated for any property type. Uh, what's most important, though, is that when you're adding and deleting rows, that you make sure that your net operating income formula, the sum of your operating expenses, the sum of your effective gross revenue, etc., uh, are the, those formulas are maintained. And then, uh, as with all models, of course, blue font uh, cells are your input cells. There's your final input here is your underwritten cap rate. And based on that cap rate and your net operating income, you're arriving at some underwritten value. And as you're building out this pro forma, along to the right here, we have a section where you can drop in notes. So uh, say reimbursement income, you might say, right, we're uh, assuming $40 per unit per month. And that just helps you and others who, who look at the model understand uh, the uh, uh, reason for the assumptions, etc. So with the pro forma section completed and your underwritten value and underwritten NOI in place, we then move to the loan sizing tab. And this is the most important tab because more than likely this mortgage loan analysis model will be used to size the mortgage loan itself. And so here, first along the top, 
uh, your underwrite the the results of your underwriting uh, from your performa tab flow over NOI cap rate value. We then drop in some loan parameters. So more than likely, if you're the mortgage lender, uh, these are parameters you have in house. Uh, and or the borrower has made some request. If you, you are the borrower, you're the, you're the principal, uh, these would likely be guidance provided uh, to you from maybe your mortgage broker uh, or uh, your experience in the market. But we have loan term, uh, requested interest only. Um, so it may be up to the loan term or zero or some amount in between but that's the number of years of interest only payments. Then we have the amortization. So after the interest only period ends, uh, the number of years to, for the amortization. And then below here we have the interest rate. And the interest rate is the sum of some benchmark. In this case, we're using the 10 year UST, but notice that's a blue font cell. You can change that uh, for a different benchmark. And then we add some spread to that, uh, denominated in basis points. So here we have 150 basis points plus a 320 10-year UST gets us to a 470 interest rate. And based on the above assumptions, that gives us a monthly amortizing payment of 37,662. Uh, or in other words, in years six through 10, this will be the monthly payment. In the first five years, uh, where they are interest only, the monthly payment will be 28,442. Then we have the proposed loan amount. Now, uh, this, is, this is a circular, uh, this is some circular logic here, where either uh, you can leave this, where there's a formula here that, solve, that uh, is calling out the maximum loan amount based on some uh, you know, call it loan metric tests. Uh, and really what we're saying is based on an amortizing payment, what is the maximum debt coverage? And if you recall, debt coverage is net operating income divided by debt service. And so uh, we might say on an amortizing payment, the lender will have a minimum debt service coverage ratio of 1.30. Uh, and on an interest only payment of 1.50, uh, then the lender uh, will likely have some debt yield test. The lender will say, okay, uh, I need a maximum, or I'm sorry, a minimum debt yield of 9%. And if you recall, debt yield is net operating income divided by loan amount. And then finally, the loan to value test. The lender will say, uh, I cap out at 70% loan to value uh, or 65% loan to value or 75% loan to value, right? And I'll go back to 70. And based on those four tests, a maximum loan amount will be calculated here that by default is linked to this cell. Now this cell is blue because uh, your process for sizing the loan may be in reverse. You may want 7 million and then you can do some tests to determine whether that 7 million is viable. So I put 7 million in and so far, it, yeah, it's viable, but let's say that uh, we have a 75%, next, I'm sorry, 65% uh, max loan to value. As a result, that test fails and therefore we know 7 million is not viable. Go back to where we were. And so that's our lo loan sizing tab. And then finally, we have a refinance analysis. Now this is, a, this is a separate module that we have in our library that I've inserted into uh, this particular model and, and plugged it in such that you can do on the fly refi analysis based on your pro forma and your loan size. And there's just a few uh, inputs that you'll add here. The first is, uh, you'll take your pro forma net operating income and grow that by some percentage. Uh, or maybe you don't grow it by anything and you set that to zero, but this is your NOI growth rate. Uh, you also have the option to grow your cap rate. So if you recall, we have used 6.5% as the cap rate going in. Uh, 
maybe we grow that by five basis points per year. Uh, not atypical to have a some to expect some growth in your cap rate uh, as the building becomes more obsolete just over time uh, that's the case and so naturally you'll have some growth in your cap rate and then below we have some interest rate growth and that's a growth in the benchmark and uh, have the option to adjust the spread and then finally uh, the the refinance analysis the sensitivity is based on some shock to NOI and we have different levels. So we have base NOI, and then we look at the refinance risk at each year, uh, and we assign or we, we put some shock at different levels to NOI. So for instance, we look in say year five, in the event in year five, there was a 10% reduction in, a, in NOI, the LTV would be 30, 73%. And it turns red because that 73% is above the 70% threshold that we set for a market LTV rate in that year, okay? And so the, this table here sensitizes uh, different reductions in NOI and then bolds in red if in that, in that year, the asset does not meet the uh, refinance test in any one of the categories, be it LTV, NOI debt coverage, or refi proceeds. And refi proceeds essentially say, uh, if, if the proceeds are less than zero, uh, then this is gonna turn red. And so this is just a great way, more for, for principle, but also uh, if you're on the debt origination side to understand uh, where risk might exist, help you sensitize some of, of those metrics. And then finally, the data tab, here you can add the property types, uh, you could, and this is where you could add loan types. Uh, you might have to make some other adjustments, say, to include a construction loan, but it, it wouldn't be too, too much of an adjustment to the model to do that. Uh, also, let's say you add pr a, pr a property type, you need to then set the unit type, both singular and plural, and that's used for a few of our headings. So imagine we added medical office, that would be, let's see, net rentable area, and the plural, that would also be NRA. And now that property type would, would appear in our property type uh, drop-down menu. So those are the five tabs, and this is the mortgage loan analysis model. Please reach out if you have questions or if you spot an error in the model, this is version 1.1. Uh, likely are uh, errors, um, even small things. And so please let me know if you spot them and I'll uh, correct them. And thanks for your time.